Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Snare 17 stream. It's Monday, June 27th, 2022, and it's been a bit. It's been pretty busy, as I always seem to be. But anyway, I'm going to be jumping in and doing a little bit of scenery stuff. Now, I have to make an admission right, right, right here at the beginning of this stream. I was working on some things with my PC flat, uh, about a week and a half ago, and I decided I was going to take the CPU in my streaming PC and put it in the gaming PC, because I set it up, you know, it was the middle of COVID about a year and a half ago or so, and I was thinking, oh, I was going to be doing all this streaming and all these, all this really like high quality video editing and stuff, which I have not done any of the video editing, editing that is. And so I needed the beef to be on the stream PC because I needed all that processing power. Well, here I am in June of 2022 now, and I started doing all this stuff like last year, but, uh, I might've been, oh, it was 2020. So it was two years ago, two and a half years ago. But anyway, so I've started doing all this and realized that I don't need the 5900X in the streaming PC. It should be in the gaming PC. So the gaming PC was running a 3900X. Not a whole lot of difference, but the 5900X is definitely beefier. 3900X is still a pretty beefy CPU. So I was like, this is plenty to do the streaming I need to do. So I switched them. I also got some slightly faster RAM for this the gaming PC, and it is, it's not, not super, it's 3600 megahertz. It's not up from 3200. I noticed a little bit of a difference. Not a ton of difference, but it makes everything seem really snappy on this gamer, which I'm pretty happy with. So in the process of doing this, I managed to not be able to boot onto the, on my hard drive on my gaming PC anymore. So I had to get a new hard drive and I got a, a fourth gen hard drive. This is the one that failed right here. Well, 970, what is it, 970 Pro? It's all right. So now I have a one gigabyte 980 Pro. No, 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 it's not a 980 Pro. It's whatever the Western Digital um, equivalent is of a 980 Pro. One gig, one terabyte in the, uh, for the OS now. So I can put other apps and stuff on there. And I have a one terabyte 980 Pro SSD for the gaming media on the gamer. So Flight Sim, as you see, and everything like that is installed. All the games are going to be installed on that one terabyte 980 Pro. And everything else is going to be on there. Anyway, so I had a new hard drive I'd put in, which means I had to reinstall some stuff. Fresh hard drive. And I'm like, I can't get this hard drive to boot. So anyway, the old one, that is. So I got the new one in there. It's, it boots just fine. But then I realized after the fact, after I'd already formatted both of them, <laughs> trying to get this to work, that I wiped out all my chicken scenery work that I've been doing. So... We're back to square one on this Greensboro project. I'm going to back it up this time, which it's it's easy to do. So I can probably cloud back it up and it's not gonna cost me hardly anything, I think, which is what, I'll, what I think I'll do because it is crushing to lose those hours of work. But anyway, we go back to square one. So here we go. <laughs> We're gonna start from the beginning. Now, this is gonna be pretty cool because this is how you set these things up, how you set up a, a basic airport construction pro project very, very simple. And we're going to do the easy stuff here. I'm not going to do a whole lot of real technical hard stuff. I don't really know a whole lot of technical hard stuff. So here we are at the main page of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And oh, we got the Tom Cruise stuff. There you go. Notice the flight uh, training block here is grayed out it's because I've deleted all of that content. There's no flight training content left on my hard drive. I've deleted a lot of the content, the default stuff. So anyway, we go to options. We got to go to general options before we do any of this work. Go down to the developers tab here and we're going to turn developer mode on i'm going to do that before we load into the sim so we're already set to go up there and now we can go back to the main menu world map cessna 152 is a perfect plane to do for this the default i don't have any of my add-on aircraft or sceneries loaded in here for this yeah <laughs> flight simulator concierge yes Hard knock lessons, man. I did I did stupid in a really in a really bad way. 
So luckily it wasn't anything that I can't redo, but it, making all the little taxiways and things like that take a long time. So I lost all that work, but that's all right. We'll do it again, and we'll do it better, and we'll do faster, more efficiently, and all those things. So anyway, we're going to load up into... Uh, I'm going to get the same project that I had going started again. We're going to Greensboro Airport. I don't like the load onto the runways, especially since I'm going to be working on the runways, and I'm just going to go down to parking 74 rather than... I hate how it starts with this this really zoomed out view. I wish it just started like when you selected an airport, if it just zoomed into it, that would be nice. Flight conditions, I'm going to do a preset of just clear skies so we can kind of take all the, all the weight, everything else is turned off. Take all the weight off of the processor and I'm going to move the, the time to somewhere in the middle around noon. Noon 30 is good. Thanks for the, the best wishes there, sir. Yeah, we're going to try to get a bunch, a bunch of this work done. Yeah, so I'll say this. I think the PC... So I made a couple of big changes when I reformatted. First and foremost, that the I, I installed Windows 11 instead of Windows 10 because doing a fresh install, I'm curious, right? Watched a few videos on how to kind of completely... Why are we listening to commercials? I'm not getting paid for this. Stinking Spotify. Okay. Anyway, so I, I've tried Windows 11 now, and I took off all the, as much of the spy stuff as I could. And um, so far, and I've got it, like, as close to Windows 10 settings as I can. Like, I stripped out a bunch of the default stuff. Really streamlined it down, and everything's working really well. So one of the interesting kind of results of this. I don't know if it's because of Windows 11 or because I did a real fresh install of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which, oh, like it's talking about Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Hey, we're going to North Carolina right now. That's that's the Kill Devil Hills, maybe, but it looks kind of more like Ireland or something. But anyway, um, what was I saying? I don't think that's the, what those pictures, that's not what those mountains are. That's not the Kill Devil Hills. Oh, this is cool. Does it always do this? Is this a new thing that Flight Sim's doing here with these weird little panning views? Anyway, there was a point. So one of the interesting changes is that the community folder is located in a different spot now. It's really easy to get to. And it's uh, in the, before I had it, and when I was in Windows 10, the installation I had before, it was under my, my documents folder in like my C drive which was strange and I think it's I think there's like a proxy of it there still but now it's in the steam my steam library which is installed on a second drive so it's, it's really easy to get to fewer clicks and everything so maybe they changed something like that or maybe it's Windows 11 wanted it in a different spot than Windows 10 wanted it on maybe I did something wrong the first time I installed it on Windows 10 I, I don't know but anyway, it's way easier to access. And I'm also using add-on manager, what is it? Add-on manager, add-on linker, add -on, that's what it is. Add-on linker, I think is what it is. So I'm moving all the add-ons off of, out of the Microsoft Flight Sim folder natively, putting it on <clears throat> into my own folder structure, and then going in and selecting each of them individually before I run the sim which is what I did this time, and that's why I don't have any of the planes loaded in. And load times go are noticeably faster, I find, when you don't have that stuff loaded in. So if you don't need them, don't use them. All right, so here we are in the airport. We're going to hit the end button, which is my key to go to the external view. It should be the default key for just about everybody. And then uh, get the drone camera is insert. Yep. Now we can use WASD and R and F. R is for go increasing altitude. F is for decreasing altitude. And the WASD is uh, how you move around left and right. Uh, I did take the toolbar, th the little chevron thing on the toolbar off. That that mod is still installed, and I have the Navigraph stuff. That's the only mods that are in the community folder of current. So we go to showcase. We want to increase the drone speed, which isn't going to matter too much. But anyway, I want to use the default stuff that you know how to use. Because what I'm going to do next... is something that you can only do with developer mode turned on. We have developer turned on. We're in the latest SDK version, 0.18. And so now we're going to go up to camera on the developer mod. 
menu and go to developer camera, which is basically the same thing as the drone camera. Same controls. So you tilt it, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Hit the space bar, it goes back. Hit the five button, and it comes right back to your starting spot again. So there we go. So that's this is the developer camera. We're going to use this a ton. So what we have here is the raw airport. It is the basic airport that comes loaded in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is KGSO, Piedmont Triad International Airport. Yeah, folder name is too long, and, and uh, issues are things are things in this sim. You know, all of a sudden you get these buried, super buried folders. So yeah, getting it at a lower level, and let, let's look, let's look at it here. I've got it at so I go to D. See all my junk here. Uh, Steam library, Steam apps, common, Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's right there. Community, boom. So it's still kind of long, but that's where it is. So, so you got the AFC bridge. Either no handlebar and the nav graph stuff. That's all I got loaded in there. But it's it's much easier to get to instead of going through six or seven different uh, app data, my, you know, roaming, Microsoft, blah, 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 blah. So I, I don't think this is easier, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Good morning, Anthony. Good to see you, man. Welcome to the stream. So this is the moment of truth here, guys. This is This is the easy part. So we've got the airport loaded. We're looking at it right now. Now we're going to go over to the dev mode menu up here at the top left. It might look a little screwy because I've got, uh, st uh, what is it, uh, not Twitch. Uh, I've got Steam showing me the frames per second in all the apps. It shows 110 right now. That's a lot of frames. So anyway, we're going to go to new project because we're opening a new project. So new project. This is, so you get to say this is where my project's going to go. User snare, documents, my projects. I don't like that folder. So we're going to do a different folder. I'm going to do this on the desktop. Add-ons, linker, community. This is already starting to chug on me. I hate when it does this. Anyway, new folder. We're going to go uh, my scenery project. I'm going to make this all one word. There we go. My, my scenery project. And so we'll, we'll do that to start with. Okay, and the project name is going to be KGSO Piedmont Triad. Uh, we'll just do KGSO Rebuild. Create a new project. Default creator name. See, uh, snare 17, default company name. Uh, snare 17. <laughs> Why not? All right, so what do I want to create? I want to create an airport. This is for visual effects, custom stuff. We don't need any of that. We just want to do an airport. Create a custom airport located at... No, I don't want to do that. Display title, KGSO. Pete, come on. I'm like typing. Piedmont Triad International. There we go. Next. We're going to override an existing airport. We don't want to create an airport any, any, create a new airport anywhere in the world. Now we don't want to do that. This is uh, override an existing airport. So we're going to create a new airport to override the selected one in the game. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to do something that's going to go right over the other one and replace it. Jesse Lincoln, welcome to the stream. Sephiroth, good to see you, my man. Happy afternoon to you. It's still morning here on my side, 1035 AM but we're working on it here. So we're going to select the airport to override KGSO. It automatically did that. It puts in all this information for you. If you don't get this, then you just click on this and you put in the ICAO identifier, select there, select airport, and it'll fill in the rest for you and you hit create. So there we go. We've created our airport. We're done. <laughs> we're done. We can, we can go home. Uh, I wish it was that easy. Okay. So we got the inspector project editor. I want the properties tab somewhere down here too. But anyway, so there is our airport. Now what we want to do, got the project here already. We're going to select this. I feel like I'm missing something here. Um, view, there we 
there we go. So we want history, product editor, history. Okay, so we're gonna select this BGL. Now here we're gonna click load in editor down in the inspector. And we got this materials editor. We don't need that open right now. We got objects editor. We don't need we are gonna need that. And then the scenery editor window is one we really want. I'm gonna put that in right next to inspector because I like them to be right next to each other. We don't use inspector a lot. So I'm going to make it so I can just move back and forth between these two. Now, I want to make sure I go down here and get the properties window up. And I'm going to put that right over here. So we have a lot of properties to work with here, especially in the early going. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize this objects tab because we don't need it. don't want to play with it just yet. So anyway, in our so here is our scenery editor. This is the scenery hierarchy tree that we end up with. 736 here. Oh, we must be a West Coaster. Yeah, this is a real airport in real life. This is the KGSO, Greensboro, Piedmont Triad International in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. It's the airport that I work at. And uh, so that's why I've started with this. It's a big airport. It's a very ambitious project, but we're going to we're gonna do just fine. Simulator Concierge, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for stopping by. Well, good to see you. Take care and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already so you can uh, watch this later and uh, join us the next time through as well. That would be fantastic. Anyway, what was I saying? So this is, the, this is the default airport. This is exactly what we start with when we load in the sim. And you can see this is my, my gripes with it as always. This is super bright, man. What has happened with this? Wow. This is really, really bright concrete. But anyway, the the little shoulders and whatnot of this, sort of the shoulders of the runway here are completely misaligned. I think the runway is misaligned mostly is the biggest problem. So that's one of the reasons we do this. Now, if you were to take the airport diagram for this airport and look at it, so move down to the ground level here, you can... You can see a lot of weird things that, that happen with the, the Microsoft AI. Whatever AI they run when they make these things. You get these taxiway lights that are on the middle of the, the taxiway because I'll, I'll explain how the kind of the game does this stuff by default. But anyway, this is calling this Foxtrot. There's no taxiway Foxtrot at this airport. Just a FYI. And so the taxiways are all named wrong incorrectly. The runway assets are, are kind of kind of close. The runways are numbered correctly. That's a good thing. But like this runway has an approach light system. There's no approach light system to this runway, especially one that goes right across an active runway like that. Yeah, that would not be that would not happen in real life. I've explained this on other streams before when I started doing this the first time. But this is sort of a recap for all of you guys who are new. <clears throat> Thanks, Anthony, for joining, man. Uh, yeah, I first time watching. I do uh, flying content and uh, also some scenery content. I want to try to make this make this look like something that everybody can do. So these are common problems that a lot of the Microsoft default airports have, especially the ones that aren't handcrafted. Like this one alludes to Taxiway Charlie being this way. This is actually Delta 1, Taxiway Delta 1. This is Alpha 2. So the it's safe to say that all of these taxiways are completely named incorrectly. This one this calls this Taxiway Alpha. This is actually Kilo in real life. So they're all wrong. So I'm going to have to completely rename them. I'm going to also completely resurface them too. So what we're going to do, this is what happens. You've got this default airport. You've created your project here, and all it has in it is, well, nothing. You open this little thing up, and you, all you have is the airport object itself. And you'll notice that you've got these, these blender-style kind of... Uh, transformation boxes here where you can you know move things move it around if you use that one move up up the different uh, planes extend them and do things like that it's very uh, that's what you'll find in blender for messing around with polygons and you'll notice that it has this little circle around it here so it's not, not really a circle it's what a de decagon dodecagon one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So whatever a 16 agon is, is what this makes. Anyway, Jesse Lincoln of California. I am a native Californian myself. I'm an East Coaster now. I live in North Carolina, and uh, but I am of California. Lived there until I was 27. 
Seven, is that right? So, yeah. Okay, so this is all you get. And it has properties. So when you click on the airport object here, you actually get these properties, which is nice. You get the name of the airport, the ICAO, the region name. I don't know why it puts that. Country name, we'll put USA. State name, North Carolina. City name, Greensboro. Magnetic variation. That's important to, to actually set. I think we're going to put it at like 8.6 or something like that. We'll say 8.6 to start with today. We'll fix that later. Object test radius, 2,000 meters. We're going to change that to 2,500 meters. Just to, that will that should update the circle or the, whatever the 16 got is. It's radius or diameter. So let's put 3,000. Yeah, it already shrank big time. So I don't know exactly what it does, but we're going to move it a bit. Just make sure we get all the objects inside. There we go. Okay. I don't know if that makes that big of a difference, but that's what we did. So what we can do is you get these other properties down below. Apply flatten, star airport, closed airport, things like that, where you can go and you can... This this will do things in the marketplace, especially. It'll adjust attributes in there. Flatten. Apply a flatten. This is not a very flat airport. Let's just say that right here at the top. There's a lot of curvature to it. It's not an overly bumpy airport. I mean, it's got a lot of... Why is my... I really wonder why this thing is so slow. I wish it was faster. Developer camera settings. That's what we want. Translate, rotate, look at mode. Translation speed. I want it to go faster. No. Nope. It's increased after like 130. Okay, that works better. Let's zoom around a little faster here. So this taxiway in particular is extremely slopey. Huge hill down here. Which is kind of hard to see from this view. And this air this runway is extremely slope, but you can see the downward slope. Get a kind of a look at the, the slope of the taxiway here. Yeah, it definitely goes from high here down to low that this end. This is a very low spot on the airport and it goes way uphill on this runway. Anyway, there's a lot of character altitude characteristics to this airport, to any airport really. No airport is perfectly flat. So you can apply a flatten. So you click that, and it's going to take a bit because it's going to kind of re reorganize all of the, the assets here. I'm going to zoom, fly up into the sky real quick here because this seems to help kind of speed up the terrain changes. Oh, you can already tell this is flat as a pancake now. Or can you? Maybe it's not. I don't think that did anything. Or did it? Certainly looks flatter. Yeah, it's a flat airport. Okay, so it's flat now. Very boring, not very realistic. This weird terraforming that was down outside of the airport. Gets all messed up. Yeah, that's that is a flat airport now. And you, normally there's like this this part right here is sort of down lower. You can tell it's all the same right now. There's a big hole here that's not depicted any longer. Like I'm just going straight into it. It's perfectly flat. Okay, so we flattened the airport. Do we want to do that? You may want to do this. That might be something that you want to do. In fact, it's probably not a bad place to start for me. So we'll do the flatten. We'll take it out later. So you can always click on it again. And then you can already see that the terrain is starting to, to shift. It's doing it by itself. I'm not doing that. But it's as you get closer to it especially, it's going to start warping. And look at all those little curves and stuff. Yeah. You get a real idea for just how complex the terrain is on a lot of these things. Now the sim by default will already kind of flatten the area around runways. It's just something it does. It's kind of annoying, but
but you'll get used to it and learn how to work with it. All right, now we've really kind of changed the contours. Now it's kind of more to just the raw files, the raw DEM data that it uses, which is actually more real, close closer to real life than what the default scenery does. So anyway, I'm babbling, and I'm not being overly helpful. So that's what flatten does. It flattens your airport. Get rid of that. Star airport, I don't, I'm not really sure what the importance of that is. Any ground merging setup transfer parameters that's where it'll take the ground characteristics and merge them onto your surfaces which makes them a little bit opaque a little bit transparent translucent I guess you could say and also tends to put whatever the vegetation is underneath might kind of shine through it, it does strange things to your textures but uh, it's not really necessary I don't think delete command this is now this is good stuff here because just using this one object we can start taking things out that we're going to replace we got all the approaches, air, apron lights. We want apron lights gone. Aprons, watch this, gone, boom. Look at all, all those taxiways just disappeared. And the little shoulder around the runway disappeared because all of these taxiways are, are built, the actual surfaces are built with apron objects. So that's important to know, is that's how when you're drawing a taxiway pavement, you wanna use the apron object. And it's important because it's it's still drivable. It's a hard surface. It's drivable and everything. But you don't have to. You can make it whatever size and shape you want, and c totally customize it and make it match the photo scenery underneath. And it's and you can and it's a hard surface. It work, it acts just like like you would expect it to. And then we want to all the frequencies. Leave them there. Helipads. There are no helipads, but we'll delete them anyway. All the runways. Now we're going to delete runways. Runways are gone, so now there's no more runway objects in this file. All starts, so that's uh, that's your like te that's is your starts at your your ramps, your runways, things like that. We're gonna delete all of those, all the taxiways. Now there are taxiways here. You can't edit them. That's the problem. That's the problem with Microsoft Flight Simulators. You cannot edit the default airport and then just save it and have your own version of it. It doesn't work like that for some reason in this sim. So what you have to do is build your own from scratch. That's what we're doing right now. So we're going to delete all the taxiways. Taxiways are actually not surfaces. They can be surfaces, but they're just links. And so they're just lines with nodes that you're going to draw and everything. And now those, those objects have properties also where you can add pavement to it, but that is why you get the weird taxiway lights that, were, that, are in, that go in between the middle of the taxiway pavements and stuff because there's two different things happening there the the apron object doesn't have a properties where you can put like lights around the edge of it it doesn't have that by default you have to place them yourself and i'm going to do that eventually i'll show you how that works if you stick along this series probably not going to happen today but the taxiway links object does allow you to do um t edge lights just It'll automatically put edge lights wherever it wants. So what you're getting is you're getting an apron, a big apron of this taxiway up here, like this big piece of pavement with a taxiway link put in the center of it that doesn't show pavement. It's it's transparent. There's no pavement shown, but it's still putting edge lights in. And the width of those taxiways that it's making are not the same width as the apron because it doesn't know about the apron. So that's why you get taxiway lights that do things because they're not connected to the pavement that's underneath them. It's making its own little paths that says, oh, there's lights here. And then so it'll make its own custom width thing and it doesn't match the width of your taxiway. So that's that's the story on why you get weird taxiway to light things happening. Anyway, so delete all taxiways. Let's yeah, delete all blast fences. Sure. Delete all boundary fences. Now, this is an interesting one because I don't know what a boundary fence is. There's no boundary fence object. So I don't know why that gets put here. So that's something that I want to mess with a little later because it would be nice to have boundary fences, but I don't think they exist yet. Maybe that's a later thing. Jetways, we're going to get rid of them. So we take off the delete jetways thing, and we should have jetways here, right? No, is it not going to load the jetways in? Anyway, delete them. Control towers. This is not what our control tower looks like or anywhere close to it. Boom, delete it. Okay. So it's autogen. So it's, it's these are airport objects. 
Anyway, delete all departures, arrivals, painted elements. So the painted elements are all still there. You'll notice that like these whole short lines are still there. These are extra elements that go on that aren't part of the taxiway object. So we're going to delete those and then things like this disappear. All the paint's gone. Light supports, don't want them. Taxiway signs, those are super wrong. We don't want them. ILS's terminal waypoints, NDBs, we're going to keep that stuff here. Frequencies, we'll mess with that later. Light presets, that's going to be an important one that we're going to come back to later, much later. But I discovered some things about that that are very helpful, so we're going to come back to that later, as I said. All right, so what we have now is a airport that is completely devoid of aprons, like ground objects. It still has buildings and whatnot, though. So... Those are the next, that's the next thing we're going to work on. So I'm going to save this. So we have our airport project is basically nude of all the taxi surf, all the airport surfaces, the, the runways and taxiways and aprons and all the painted things and stuff like that. But we still have all the buildings and we still have all the trees. I think I'm going to leave trees on this next time. This time I did that. I took them out before. So next. So now we have to do what's called an exclude. Close that. I wish I knew a way to to not select this but anyway so going to objects we're going to go to this is your object type up here these are this the, the various libraries that we might use so we're going to go object type and we want polygon polygon there it is search for objects packages we don't need any of that stuff add one click placing default rotation don't care about any of this and snap to nodes to normal we don't need to do that either okay one click placing might be nice, but we don't, don't need to do that. So first thing you need to do when you're doing it, working with a new object is you need to click add. So that adds the object. Here it is. You can see it's in red, which means there's an error. And the error right now is quite obvious. I haven't placed any nodes for it yet. So yeah, this is simple stuff here. So we're going to press the left control button and do a left click and that will boop, add a point. You, if you do it without the control button, I'm clicking, 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 it does nothing. So you have to hit that left control. And you just can, and I'm just gonna draw a little perimeter around my airport. The reason I chose that. <laughs> okay, coming down here. I'm going to do this whole intersection actually. So we're going to go all the way down Market Street. There, there. We'll go all the way up. I forget what the name of this road is. So nobody ever drives down unless you're going to Honda Jet. This is old. This is uh, just the old Oak Ridge over here. And then I'm going to actually take it out to the highway. So there. Okay. So then you can hit enter and it'll fill, it'll finish your uh, polygon for you. Fill it in. And there we go. So we've got more or less the whole airport kind of selected here. So we've got this polygon. Now we got properties for that are just for this polygon. You notice if I click on the airport, it does the airport properties. I click on the polygon object. It's white now because it's, it's totally enclosed. Now we have different object, different uh, properties here. So I can say, hey, this is all, everything in this polygon is water. And watch this. Watch what happens. Look. It's just a big body of water now. Is it a river, ocean, blah, blah, blah. So you can, this polygon has many different uses. And uh, the the one we're doing it for right now is to change sort of this, some air. This is sort of our airport editing polygon. Uh, terraforming. You can do some terraforming things with it. Like I can say, oh, I I want it all to be of one sort of one height, one altitude. And I can do that. I can use this right here and say, oh, I want it to go up. Is it going to do it for me? 
sometimes when you make changes, it takes a little while to load in. Oh yeah, here we go. See what's happening here? Whoop. There you go. My airport is on a plateau. That's exciting. Um, okay, so now we can go up to view. Now what is it? View, undo history. I want to undo the last thing I did. Come on. Undo. So this is my trick, again, to kind of get the terrain to kind of behave. Well. There it goes. I undid one more step, and now it all went down. Let's see it. Come on. Zoom out. Hey, Kevin Walter. Welcome to the stream. We're doing some, uh, some basic, uh, instructions on how to make a, how to make an airport. So this should all be moved down now. Yeah, that, that's better. All right. So we don't need the terraforming. What, what has just happened? How did I get a logbook? Interesting. Oh, because when I lifted it up and down, my airplane moved around a little bit and now it, it thinks that it just did a landing. So it, there it is. So it uh, put it into my logbook. How nice. That's sweet, isn't it? Anyway, buildings. This So this is where we want to get into the, the good stuff here. I still have all these default buildings. I don't necessarily want to get rid of them, but this is an, now we're doing exclusions. So this polygon is going to be an exclusion polygon. We're going to take things that are inside of the polygon and get them out. So buildings. You got this TIN. I don't know what that means. Detected buildings, OSM buildings, which is OpenStreetMap, and Microsoft buildings. So I want to exclude the Microsoft buildings. And you notice that pretty much nothing changed. Oh, there was some Microsoft buildings, and that was the, the terminal. Nope. Doesn't really do much, <clears throat> does it? It doesn't. Exclude OSM buildings. Let's see what that excludes. Ah. Now the airport buildings are gone. So that just lets you that just shows you that oh the traffic is still all wonky. That these buildings were all from OSM data, OpenStreetMap data. Detected buildings. Tin, whatever that is. Just exclude all. Force buildings on tin, I don't know what that means. Force detected buildings. So there, so all these buildings are gone now. But you will notice that there's still a couple of things that are left behind that we'll have to do other ways. We'll have to get a little bit more interest a little more intricate with like for instance this beacon, which is god awful looking. And it's actually located right there in that little spot, not over here. So that's still there, but all the approach lights and everything are ripped out. Oh, I thought they were. Interesting that they're still there. So let's see. We want to exclude roads, get the roads out, get the street lights out, power lines, feature points. Let's get all that out of there. Why are there still lights shown here? Oh, because I didn't... No, they're still there also, but we'll mess with that later. It's almost as if there's still a runway object here. My airport stuff is coming back for some reason. Why are my signs back? Okay, I think I know why. So, I think I undid a bunch of stuff when I did this here. Delete command. Oh no. That's all there still. Eh, who knows? This stuff should not. These taxiway signs should not be showing up. Delete command. Delete. Taxiway signs. Taxiway signs. Go. Be gone. Lighting is still here. All these, all these objects are still here. 
Okay. This is getting frustrating. Save, and I'm going to close the project. Watch all this stuff just zoom, pop back up again. There it comes. See all the buildings are coming back in, all the surfaces. And now we're going to open the project. So rebuild. The XML. Jesse Lincoln says, I'm a mobile flight simmer, but I have, do have an interest in air, creating an airport once the technology for it on mobile is made, and I already have a design drawing on my first proposed airport. Oh, that's good. Now, would you want to make an airport from scratch, like your own, build your own <coughs> super airport? <coughs> Excuse me. Or would you want to do something uh, where you're actually building an already, already existing airport? That's the question. Okay, so we've opened the project up. Now what we have to do is open... This is not loading. Huh. Interesting. Makes all these folders when you do this, and I don't. Yeah, okay, that's not my project. Why is the BGL not here? We seem to have messed something up. All right. So we're going to close it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to our Explorer here. Desktop, my scenery project, KSGO rebuild. We're just going to delete it. And start over. <laughs> I've already given up. New project. There we go. KGSO rebuild. Airport. KGSO. Piedmont. Triad. International. Next. KGSO had already found it. Create an airport. There we go. Now we got the BGL. Load in editor. Don't need that. Okay. Now we got it. Now we're doing better. Okay, so we got this. Save the scenery. <sighs> Start airport, close airport. We don't care about it. Generate taxi with science, don't need to do that. Ground merging, don't need to do that. Delete, so we do need to do apron lights, aprons, helipads, runways, starts, taxiways, blast fences, boundary fences, jetways, control towers, deleted, departures, arrivals, don't need to do that. Painted elements, light supports, taxiway signs, and the rest can stay. All right, so now as I zoom, go down to ground level, why are they still here? Hmm. All right, so let's just start from oh, start from scratch here. So we're going to create an airport. Actually, let's not let's not delete it. So we're going to go this one. We're going to go closed airport. We're going to close that airport. I think that matters here.
This is already behaving differently than it did the first time I did this. Anyway, so we're going to create an airport object. There it is. Center it, say, like around there somewhere. And crash the desktop. Okay, so we were having an issue there. Let's just delete this. All right. Bear with me here, guys. I don't know what that comment was. It's a very odd thing to ask. Right. So, sorry about this, guys. This will take just a second here. Hello, Kevin Walter. Welcome to the stream. We have done something that made it upset. <laughs> Waiting for the reload. Okay, so world map. KGSO. Zoom, 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 zoom. All right. Parking 74. Set us departure. Fly. Got dev mode turned on already by default. So this is nice that it reloads the thing and we'll get the frames back up again. Variety cameras. You can access a variety of camera angles. You can go anywhere in the world. This is a pretty nice picture. I think some of the newer content, uh, the latest update has got some new things. I broke, yeah, Zephyrus, I, I broke it. I don't know what I did. All right, hit the insert key to get into the drone camera again. Ugh. Not the drone camera, the dev cam. Why is it so slow? My goodness, it's slow. It's got to be somehow linked to the drone. There we go. Okay. David Gerson, welcome. I'm doing well, man. How are you doing today? Happy Monday. Your weekend's off to a good your week is off to a good start, I should say. Alright, now I seem to have done something very wacky. Is my rotating not working? That's right, slew mode. There we go. Okay. Anyway, trying this again. All right. So we're going to go new project. Project name, KGSO, Rebuild. Great new project. Snare 17, Snare 17. Oop, airport. KGSO, Piedmont. Triad, International. All that, create an airport. There we go. All right. Load our BGL, which doesn't have any real content to it yet. All right. Back to the basics. Let's go. Let's do our our uh, polygon first this time. Just going to do really polygon here. Really quick stuff. Right. Uh, add. 
for right click or left command as well. children. What has gone on here? I messed something up. I'm glad you're learning. So I just restarted the whole thing. So uh, errors are being made. The sim is not not cooperating at all times here. Actually, I don't like this. Uh, add a new one. So we're doing the polygon. We've got a fresh airport here. Doing the polygon. This does not have to be exact by any means because it's not going to do anything super harmful. Oh, gosh, I accidentally clicked it again. All right. New polygon. <laughs> I'm rushing. It's a radar site right there. If you accidentally click twice, it, it completes your polygon and then you can't re redo it after that, so you gotta be careful here. Hold down left command and cl left click. Here's what's doing all of this. Left control, that is, not left command. We're not Mac users. Diaper change happening right behind me here. And enter. All right, now it's done. Airplane on smash. So you're going to see why I do the polygon. The first thing I'm doing is the polygon. The polygon is for my exclude. This is an exclude polygon we're going to make. So we made an object that's called the polygon. It's right there. It's outside of the, the hierarchy. I like to keep the exclude outside of it. And so now what we're going to do is going to view the properties toolbar over here. So we're going to go to buildings and we're going to exclude all buildings. So that's the first thing I want to do is get rid of all the buildings. All right, this is already looking better. going to exclude roads. Get rid of all the roads. Exclude all the street lights, all the power lines, whatever future feature points on. Now you can also do this. You can also get rid of vegetation. There's your vegetation. You can say, I want it all gone. Slide all this to zero. All the trees are gone. There's no more trees. Or you can deselect that, and all the trees come back. So that's a good one to have, kind of set, at least while you're creating things, because you can see a lot easier. You can turn it back on later, or turn it off later, I should say. But yeah, so now we're just flat as a pancake airport. So we got rid of the objects. These will require exclusion pot like rectangles as opposed to uh, things like the, the beacon here, as opposed to just doing it the way that I just did it. And I think the cars here will as well. I haven't figured the cars out yet, but we'll, we'll figure those out together at some point. I somehow just created an apron <laughs> with a runway. That was interesting. All right, so we're gonna delete those, get those out. All right, so there, there we got. This is our exclusion poly, and I'm going to select it. As we can see here, it is selected, and go down to click on this little one right here. This is create a new group and add selected items to it. So this item is selected. I'm going to create a new group, and this is group is going to be called. And right click it, click rename, say polygon. So there we go. So you have a group called polygons. I'm going to move it above my airport. 
There we go. It has the polygon inside of it. So the airport group. Let's go to the airport group. Airport object now. So kind of doing this in reverse. So that, that was the use that the polygon has. It's an exclusion polygon. We did that to get rid of all the buildings and stuff on the end, and the vegetation inside of that polygon. Still doing terraforming things. Now that there's no runways, it's it's kind of resetting its DEM data. As I said earlier, runways act as uh, flattens and to some degree. They will change the contour of your ground. Let's see, the ground's taking on all sorts of strange properties now. That is that is the, the least flat runway you've ever seen. So we're going to fix that as well, but this is sort of the raw data that you're going to be dealing with. Alright, so now we're going to get rid of all the aprons and everything, and that's what we do here on the airport property. So Piedmont Triad International, you click, click on that or whatever your airport's called, and you get these different properties over here with all this information. Bobby to Bobby, you can do a flatten to make your entire airport flat. Start making a star airport, closed airport. And uh, I think for now, we'll just go into the delete command. We're going to delete all the aprons. Notice all the surfaces here are gone, except the runways remain. All the those, all runways. Now the runways just disappeared. Old starts, gone. Taxiways, gone. Blast fences, boundary fences, jetways, control towers, delete. Departures and arrivals leave there. Painted elements, we want those gone as well. Light supports, we want those gone. Taxiway signs, we want those gone. Okay, so we just deleted basically all of the data of stuff. But when I zoom in here, they, they're still here. I don't understand why they're still here. And how does how does it know to put these things here? Who, who tells it to do this? I, this didn't happen before. I don't know. Don't know what it means. There we go. So we've saved it, and so right, I'm gonna click on this and go to objects, and I'm just gonna place a runway. Let's just place a runway. Runway's number is going to be five. Set it to 45 degrees. So 46, I think, is whatever, 47. And I'm going to click Add. There it goes. So right in the middle of your screen, it will give you a runway. You can use yes, the two little green arrows there on the inside are starts, runway starts. So you can use the little thing here to kind of click and drag it. Remember I said they have terraforming properties. You can see the ground is already starting to warp around it. Whether you use the terraforming property or not, it is going to do it. Minus one meters is kind of what it sets itself to. Put zero on there and it shouldn't really do anything. The earth is flattened. It's annoying. It's a problem. Okay. So, let's see, we can click on our runway here, and we can make it wider by using the uh, corner object here. We can rotate it off of the opposite corner, which is helpful in a way. By clicking the end ones, you can lengthen it. And by doing these over here, you can make it wider. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the end of it and move it down to right about there-ish. And I don't like the width of it now, so I want to make it down to like there. This side down to like there. And we crashed again. <sighs> I 
I don't know how this is happening. <sighs> la, 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 la. Well, let's do this. I'm going to do a reboot. <laughs> See if that helps at all. <sighs> Annoying. I didn't do this before under Windows 10. <sighs> so I may already know what I have to do. Windows 10, we might be coming back to you. I did do a save. Hopefully the save works. Isn't that pretty? I think it's pretty. Windows 11 is definitely attractive, I'll give you that. Alright. That's pretty. All right, back into Windows, pretty much everything loaded up. I use a KVM uh, uh, app called uh, Input Director. It's this one right here that you'll see. To uh, so that I'm only I at the. <laughs> You're right, Sephiris. I was doing it just a just a tinker, you know. I wanted to see what was up, and I'm I think I'm paying the price here. As I was saying, I have the keyboard and mouse connected to my streaming PC, and I also use it via the input director through the network to KVM. It's a keyboard, video, mouse. That's what KVM stands for. I don't do any video, but anyway. So I can use the same mouse and keyboard on both PCs at the same time. And it, as a transition, you'll notice I swipe down and it I have this monitor that you're looking at set as the top. So there's a monitor here, a monitor here, and then a monitor sitting on top of them up there. And uh, so the one on the top is the gaming PC. And then I, so when I move my mouse down, it goes on to the other two. So I have a monitor here, here, here. You can't see it's right under the camera. And the gaming monitor is right here. One mouse, one keyboard, two different PCs. No, the heart, no latency at all. If you have a good internet connection, not an internet connection, but a good, good network, there's like no lag. No lag. Not any more than a hardware KVM switch that you can get. All right, so we've got this. I'm gonna get kind of crazy here. I'm going to open the project before I load the scenery in. Oh, it's not there. <sighs> Yeah, put it in there. Figures. All right, let's do that. It's already loading in. World map. KGSO. Piedmont Triad. And good. Weather conditions and everything are set appropriately. Let's go. So yeah, I think the, the big mistake here was Windows 11. What would I wish that Microsoft Flight Simulator added? Um, better tools for building airports. <laughs> would be nice. Better scenery tools. Uh, I think one of the things I think the connection to to the Microsoft the, the flight sim community is really lacking in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Like the marketplace is nice, but I'd rather see, I'd the scenery gateway is by far I think one of the best assets of X Plane. So I would love to see something like that in Flight Simulator. Developer camera is open. That's better. Okay. Now we're moving faster. All right.
stability. That's a good call, Sephiroth. Better stability. Load and editor. So this is what you would do every time after you created it originally, is you'd come in, you'd go dev mode, open the project up, then you have to click on this, get the BGL, and then go down to load and scenery editor. And now all the things that I did before should be loaded in. Changing things around. All right, now all right, we're in better shape here because all of those objects that I didn't want to be in there are, are, are out. There's no more lights. There's no more taxiway signs. All of those things are gone. Okay, so it's legit now. We're, we're legit. Let's see how long it lasts. So we've got the polygon group. We've got the airport group still. Very nice. Okay. So pretty much did everything right up until when I created that... Uh, uh, the runway. So let's do the runway. And that, this might have been the step that was tripping it up to the fact that I told it to delete all those objects but it didn't actually do it. Now they're, they are deleted so it might not be messing up on that anymore. Alright, so we're going to do a runway. We're going to put runway 5. Add it. Let's go ahead and put the center like right there because that's actually where the center of the runway is. Now, interestingly enough, we're terraforming already. Why did it put it up there? I don't understand this. See what I mean about runways have terraforming properties? So how do you set the altitude of a runway? Seem to have made it to the point where it's going to at least be kind of level on the ground. There we go. Um... So the, you go to view here, and there's a thing called gizmo. It gives you a spot where you can set things like altitude, rotations, lat longs, altitude. This is it. So 269.48708, blah, 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 blah. That's what it's giving me right now. And so we can rotate this this way like so. And now I want to move this over here. we go. Take the end of it. Stretch it into this direction. I don't know. This doesn't have to be exact. Ugh. I already don't like the way this is performing. It's making me nervous. I think I'm about ready to nuke Windows 11. <laughs> if this is the way it's going to work, then I'm, I'm not into it. So you notice the, the color of the pavement. It is what it is. We don't really care about that at the moment. We're just basically trying to get this basic runway in. We'll, we'll fine-tune it more later. So there we go. we got a runway. It has no markings on it whatsoever, no lights, anything like that. It's just kind of laid there. So we can go to Properties. I'm going to open up that Properties window, minimize that, Change the, turn the gizmo down. Let's fly high into the sky. Let the, let the terrain... Kind of catch up. You see it created this object here, runway 5, 2, 3. That's what we wanted it to do. Terrain should be better loaded in now. Yeah, see it's all performing better now also. That was what was slowing it down. It was trying to catch up with terrain stuff. It always does that. Anytime you change terrain, it, it gets a little, a little chunky while it's loading it all in. It doesn't happen right away. Okay, so properties for runway. Display name. Well, runway 2, 5, 2, 3 sounds good to me. Configuration. This is where you can set its heading, its length, its width, and it's all in meters, which is not helpful if you are used to freedom units, like I am. But anyway, 
there's stuff like that. Pattern altitude. I don't know why it's all set to meters. It's not not superly helpful. So number. It's going to be runway 5. And it's a primary designator. So when you do a runway, you give it two numbers. You give it a primary and a secondary uh, number. The primary number is the one that we set up here. It's going to be 05. So the primary number is 05. And that's going to be from the this end over here. Get stupid that end over there that's the primary end this is the secondary end so when you're dealing with these properties primary designator secondary de designator so that is going to be set you can set it to left right or center or none so five is a is a right side so we're gonna runway five right runway two three left secondary is automatically two three so you can see it's already changed the numbers zero five right two three left did the same down here Okay. So you and you can turn it off for for takeoff and landing. So I can say the primary runway is which is five left, five right. It's not used for takeoff or not used for landing. You can do the same thing on the secondary side. This is more for like the AI traffic and for its own uh, the end game ATC. You can turn it off for those things and say this one's only used for takeoff. This one's only used for landing. Crash animations, actual fire. <laughs> I turn crashes off. I don't, I don't want to crash. Vegetation around the runway. I don't really know what that does, but we want that turned off just in case. <laughs> materials. This is, I'll say, we're getting into good stuff here. Let's go to markings. Let's, let's do materials last. Markings. So there's no markings on our runway. There's no lighting on our runway. It's just a big piece of pavement, which nice. it's nice that they automatically put the rubber marks down. That's That's pretty cool, I think. And it gives you sort of a specular map and stuff. So you get you get the PBR f effect. Tan can, good to see you, my man. Welcome to the show. So we put placed our runway. We've kind of stretched it out to sort of mimic the the uh, dimensions of the runway uh, of the actual pavement underneath it. I've left room for shoulder. So anyway, markings. We can do edge markings. Do we want edge markings? Sure we do. That puts the nice white line on the edge. So there you see it. Now what the nice thing about the the sort of the scenery editor here is you can kind of like in Photoshop or in most uh design type of software, you can hide things. So there, the runway's hidden. So we gotta look at what's uh, underneath it. You see all the markings that we have. There's definitely edge lines. So we have edge lines now. And now we can see that the runway is just too stinking wide. But we'll fix that in the future. All right, so we have edge lines. Threshold markings. We want those. We want these lines there. Yes, we definitely want those lines there. And again, we hide it. So yeah, these lines are there in real life. whoop de doo Good job. Okay. <sighs> so, yeah, so long story short tan can is i f accidentally as i had problems with uh i did a cpu swap on my two pcs did a little bit of 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 uh surgery on the systems and then couldn't get the the hard drive the windows hard drive to boot the solid state drive to boot anymore and uh so i got a new hard drive and it wiped out all of my uh i did not have a backup of my scenery project so i'm starting from scratch I, i'm a dummy you don't need to remind me of such but uh yeah that's why we're back from scratch here if you have any way to contact you personally i want to give you a free key to my free key to your flight sim i don't know what that means i don't need to do that though <laughs> that doesn't sound like something i need yeah so i so i did i did stupid and uh had really uh, already, f I, without even thinking, I was just kind of in panic mode. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't get Windows to start here. I'll just try to do a fresh, a fresh install, and without even thinking that, oh, that would completely wipe out my scenery stuff. I saved everything else. <laughs> uh, so actually, both of my PCs are running, running Windows 11, and I, I don't like it. I, I think it's nice looking, 
there's some things about it I do like, but like Windows 11 does this weird stuff with like your microphone settings where it's like privacy settings for your microphone and the cameras and stuff where you can control. Like, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's the way it works is kind of screwy in that it doesn't, my microphone doesn't work correctly without me having to dig into settings and change a bunch of things in a lot of these different apps. So and I'm using a Go XLR, so that's part of it. So there's a whole bunch of apps that run in the background for all this and blah, blah, blah. You don't care. Anyway, runways. So we want, we got the edge markings. We got the threshold markings. Uh, so you can do alternate threshold markings, which are interesting. You do the European style where they're split across the edge just like that. We don't do that here in America. America. So we'll put them back in. Fixed distance markings. Those we like. This is a fixed, uh, they call it a fixed distance marking. And and Gert, David was asking Steam Key. Why would I need that? Is there a reason you think I need that? Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, well, that would be fun. Um, so these are common. This is one of those things where Asobo has no idea what they're doing. They don't know that much about aviation. It's, it shows kind of constantly in all the stuff that they do. It calls these fixed distance markings. These are, we call these in the, in, I don't know what you call them in other countries, but here we call them the thousand footers. So it is a fixed distance. It is a fixed dif distance away from the runway threshold. It's a thousand feet, but they're also generally learned, referred to as aim points. Touchdown markings. You want those too. These are pretty typical, and you'll see as we disappear the runway, we have these markings, and these are all precision approach markings as well. Alternate touchdown markings will make the runway, but most are basically in the same spot. Make them like that, which is again kind of European style. Center dash line. Do we want a center line? Yeah, let's put a center line in there. Number designator at the end. This is the important part. We want it to say this. <laughs> And it says five right on the other end. There we go. Basically in the same spot. I'll do a little fine tuning of that in a little bit, but these things are all basically in the same spot. Precision markings. This is the ones where runway must be at least 6,000 feet long and 80 feet width. Okay, so precision, precision markings is going to put these extra little ones in there. As they are in real life. There we go. So we've got all those markings in. Very nice. Extra pavement past the edge markings. This is kind of an interesting one in that it's going, to, it's going to say right now the edge markings are right on the edge of this object. So when you click this, it adds a little bit extra. We don't need that. Only be usable from primary end. No, it's usable from all ends. Primary end eh, closed with an X. No, secondary end closed with an X. So there will be times where you have closed runways that are in for scenery, like they're actually there, but they're not used, so you can mark them as closed, like permanently closed in your scenery if you like. Uh, primary end is short takeoff and landing, so it'll say stole on it. Sorry, stole, I think it will say, if you put that in there. Yeah, there it is, stole, short takeoff and landing. We don't need that. No arrows at the end of offset. Offset threshold. We don't have an offset threshold. Okay, so that's good. Primary marking bias. Secondary marking bias. So you can move. I think that's what that does, is that'll move things a little bit. If you want to shift them in any direction. Okay, so we're pretty much done with markings for now. Twitter or Discord. So if you look at the descri video description, down towards the bottom, it says it has my Twitch, my Discord, and uh, my Twitter account links. So you can get those there. I do thank you for asking. Uh, okay, so there we go. So basic runway set has some markings on it. Now we can do lighting. This is you're gonna find this is stuff that I'm all gonna I'm gonna completely undo at later anyway. Center line lights. Yes, we want high, high intensity center line lights. So when you put those in, there you go. We got center line lights. They're embedded. There they are. 
So notice they're white on this side, but if I go around to this side, they're red. That's kind of cool. And that's just a normal property of lights. Uh, so edge lights, we'll do the same thing with high intensity lights. It takes a second, but then I'll put all of these lights in, starting there. Green light. Why would it be green? Oh, I know that. I know why. And then we got edge lights all the way along. Okay. So turn that off. Pavements. Now we can do primary threshold. So on the primary end. Let's, let's actually go sweeping around to the primary end. Didn't really look at that much. Now looking at it again, here's the other end, five right. And as we turn the runway off, notice that everything is kind of kind of accurate there. The runway's too wide. You don't need to remind me. I know this already. So primary threshold. You click on that. This is giving you like an extended threshold here. So if we have, I say I want to put like an extra 50 meters of threshold. So now the there's a displaced threshold. It will displace your threshold by 50 meters. We don't need that. And we also, you can change it and make it a different uh, material as well. Um, so the blast pad, this will add on to the end. In fact, this is kind of reminiscent of what we already have here. And you can change the material of that as well. So like I can go to material editor and say that I want runway. I want it to be, let's make it cement. It clearly seems to not even care what I put in there. Uh, so let's do cement. Drag it on there. I think it's already macadam. I might have part, be part of it. Well, I don't know what to say about that now. So it doesn't seem to be working. All right. Anyway, we're turning that off. We don't need it anyway. We're gonna custom make this secondary over. So primary overrun is again. Is this another? extra material on the end. I think our left side has a little bit of overrun to it. It's blast pad, essentially. So you can put these things in. I don't really like them, so I'm not going to use them. Approach lights. So this is where we can set up the approach lights objects. And uh, so that's all stuff that we can mess with later. Now this is this is interesting stuff. This is this is what you need. You need the vazies. Really cool, really cool stuff here. Tan can, all right, you're gonna take off. Glad you said hi. Come back anytime. <laughs> you know you're welcome here. Good to see you, buddy. We'll 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 look in again later. So this is where the pappies are for this runway in real life. So primary. Is there so you can set which side of the runway they're on? It's not on the left side, so we're going to go right side. Remember, this is the primary and the five end, so we're going to do primary right. We're going to set it to Pappy two, Pappy four, four lights, Pappy lights. So we selected that, and it should have put them in here somewhere. I don't see them, but. Edit position is something we want to do here. I don't see them. Where are they? Oh, it puts them in the middle of the runway. That's right. I forgot about that. So, yeah. So, here they are. They're right here in the middle of the runway. So, when you hit, click edit position, now you have the ability, ability to move them the same way we would the rest of the runway. And it's, uh, it's sort of normal, I think is what it's called, 
where it's the little the little hook that determines where it's located. It's on the left side of it here. So we can just sort of put it there. There they are. Actually place those really nicely. So now we can say, well, I gotta move it over just a little bit. Try to get it kind of exact on there. Here's something that's helpful. So go to camera, go to top down camera. This camera is amazing. You get right on top of things. You can't tilt this, you can't rotate it. It's just going to true north. That's where it's pointed right now, so you get right on top of things. And really place them in a good spot. So it's kind of tough here because it's kind of casting its own shadow. They're all red. Alright, that's nice. Uh, go back to the regular developer camera. It's always going to start back on your aircraft. Let's fly off of it there. And we come in and look. Pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. just too much there. Should have left well enough alone. Alright, I like that. Uh, uh, meh. So these numbers here are really just telling it where the, co the coordinates are kind of in reference to the center of the runway. There, that's good. That's good. We like that. Beautiful. Wunderbar. Okay, so as you approach the runway, you'll see the pappies. Get your glide slope information. They're set at 3 degrees, which is normal. So they're placed in an accurate spot, which if I turn this airport off, you would see that the other ones, the default ones, are not placed in the right spot. So that's a big helper. Big time helper. All right, and let's... Did I just mess that up? No, I, no, I did not. All right, save... I deserve weight 1.69 million, but not 1.7. All right, so now we swing around to this end over here. To the secondary end, make sure I can select it again. And we're going to do <coughs> secondary left, Pappy. Secondary left is what we want for the bassy because it goes right there on that pad. Set a gravel in there. What were we aiming for? Okay, so we got the sort of red spots again. That's what we're going to aim for. So we're going to go secondary left, Pappy 4. See this? So the offset, the bias here is XY is just 0, 0 because its bias is set to the center of the runway. Now, see, it, there it is. You can see it in the center of the runway. Edit position. Now we're going to pull it down. 
So you can do it numerically or you can click and drag like we're doing right now. And I prefer to click and drag. But I have no idea what the numbers are just off the top of my head. And I don't care to really try to figure it out. It's a very slow way of trying to just guess at where they might be located. But this click and drag thing ain't, ain't the best either as you can see. Alright, come on. There we go. And we're going to place it, say like right there. All right, so the reference point's still on this side of it, so I'll put it there. It's actually a pretty good placement. So we can move it just up that way. Nudge it a little bit more. I like what I'm seeing. And I want to just move it, move it just to the left here a little bit. All right. Your connection issues. There we go. Center pretty well. Center pretty well. Center pretty well. Beautiful. And that is how you accurately place your happy lights. Vazies would be the same. The same thing if you had the four the four spot vazies as opposed to to happies in this case. Vazies are usually two and two. No, happies are parallel. That's not what P stands for. It's precision approach. path indicator. So these will, pappies will generally be located at, uh, on a runway that has an ILS approach and a, a precision approach. There we go. They work nicely. Okay. So that's kind of customizing some things. It's placing things in the spots where they really go, which is part of the fun of doing these whole projects is you will find that everything that you place yourself will be placed much more accurately than default uh, assets. I think a default, some of these are on the wrong side of the runway. They're too far out. They don't match at all. So the Asobo slash Microsoft AI that set all these things up in the first place didn't do a very good job. Let's just say that. How do I fly? Very carefully. <laughs> That's how. Um, so yeah, I, I have a private pilot's license, pilot's license in real life, and I'm yeah, I do VFR flying. But uh, when I do flying videos, I do VFR mostly IFR. I find because IFR is just a better way to fly, and I like to do it on bat sim. So there's uh, all of that. All right, let's close that Bazzy thing off. We're done with that for now. I think it's still set on the lights, so it's still doing Bazzy stuff where it wants me to. I don't need to edit position any longer. All right, good. So you had to turn that off so you can get back to the part where you're actually working on the runway again. All right, so I wanted to come in the center here because it's a problem with the width. There we go. So now we're moving the width. Oh, let's let's look at something else first. Select the runway to materials. Now, this is where things get really neat. We've had it set for asphalt. Okay, so that's just going to be asphalt. That's what it looks like. It's not that exciting, but runways aren't really that exciting anyway. So we're going to leave it on asphalt. Not adding materials. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's already got its uh, kind of maps and everything. It's got the, rub the rubber marks and such. It looks fine. What we do want to do, on, although, is you can make it transparent so you can see through it. Now all the markings and lights and stuff are still there, but uh, which hel is helpful for when you're doing things like this, where I'm adjusting 
the width of the runway to make sure the, the markings line up. And I bet that's actually why, kind of why it's there. But, uh, uh oh, crashing. Crashing. Yep, there it goes. I didn't save. Yeah, GFR, high fly GFR, the good flight rules, exactly. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm thinking Windows 11 is kind of a dead thing to me now. <laughs> You're dead to me, Windows 10, or 11. Ah, oh, my goodness gracious, how frustrating. This is what, the third time it's crashed? And it doesn't perform halfly, half as well as it... At least the, the SDK, the, the dev mode, doesn't perform as well as it did in Windows 10. <sighs> disappointing. It's very disappointing. Just got a new sub and then it crashed. <laughs> uh... Am I pronouncing your name David Gers like Gerson? Like, why does that sound familiar? Gerson sounds like something from uh, what was the movie with the uh, Mark Wahlberg and and uh, Will Ferrell? The, is it the other guy? The other guys? The guy named David Gerson or er, it's Urson or something like that? I think in that movie, it's similar, but the same but not the same. Well, so this will be a two hour, sh what is this? How long have I been streaming here? An hour and 40 minutes of me resetting Windows a whole bunch of times. Or wait, resetting uh, Flight Sim. All right, my daughter is being a three-year-old. She's discovered her screaming ability. Okay, so I'm I'm pronouncing it like a like an American. <laughs> oh, look at that! It crashed right away that time. Okay, well, this is frustrating. Very frustrating. We'll see how fast the 5900X and 3600 megahertz RAM can reboot on the off a. Uh, Gen 4 SSD. Do 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 do. do. And here we are. There it is. Not too bad. Let me take a second for it to load the input director so I can get the mouse and keyboard working on it. There it is. Okay. And flight sim. Yeah, this is a uh, this is how you lose your whole audience right here, guys. <laughs> this is uh Master class in disappearing your audience. Look at this. It won't even start now. Oh, there it goes. Well, thank you so much to everybody who has uh, subscribed here during this uh, during this stream, this nightmare stream that we're having here. I think, uh, where does it tell me who has been? Does it tell me somewhere? Where, where's the activity thing here? Webcam, manage. Stream. Where does it tell me what is going on on my stream? Stream elements doing that? Do, 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 do. So we've gotten at least five new subscribers during this stream, which is nice. I appreciate that very much. Let 
just, I don't know. There's something weird about this. It just doesn't want to, it's not telling me in my activity. Why is it not showing me my recent activity? Do I have to, oh, because I have to re, I know why. Okay. Activity feed. That is not working right. I think I have to re log it into my. I changed my freaking. YouTube password, that's probably something to do with it. Okay, so here we are. Alright, so this is his last chance, and then we're, if it, if it crashes on me right away again, then we're gonna have to call it a day, and I'm gonna have to do some reinstalls. I will copy and save the data this time, though, from the, the scenery project, and I will, I'll start, I'll set up like a, like a Dropbox or something for that, so that it'll, it'll Cloud back up. All right, it's gonna warp me back here a little bit. Load in editor. I wish I, I wish I knew what was causing it to do all this weirdness. The frames are, it's already, it's over 100 frames. You can't really read that, but it's getting good framey poos. So what would be nice is if it had like a airport editor like went like explain had because it's a separate uh, application that you can do all this in a 2d windows application from the out from external from the, the sim you don't need to do it from inside of the sim uh, i think it's a little a little much to make you force you into the sim environment to do this but there's some nice things like object placement and stuff like that where it is actually nice to, to do. Okay, so my Pappy locations are saved. That's good. Now I'm going to go to the runway, and we're going to do the thing where I was... There we go. So the polygon, we're going to select that. I'm going to lock the polygon thing because I don't want to mess with it by accident. All right, selecting runway. Let's open up the properties window. Materials, transparent. There we go. So I'm gonna work on this again. Get the width right. So squeeze it into there. Remember, this is what I was doing when it crashed the last time. There. Okay. So now the center lines are in the center. Oh, but there's all sorts of corruptions in the Asobo game files. <laughs> Alright, we gotta rotate, we gotta angle error here. The problem that paint is not lining up well. And it gets worse as you go further south, or further down the runway. The runway's just not set at the right angle. Okay. While we're here, we'll do the we'll change the end. Okay. 
there. Now you'll see one of the wonky things about the actual runway object here is that because the, the ground is like not flat, that the actual this yellow marking is going to be in a different level as the ground moves than uh, what the actual runway is on. See, so this little yellow line here comes across. It's actually higher than ground level. So when I when I switch this edge from back here, it looks like the runway end is between the the threshold paint and line paint and and these markings, but when you get right on top of it, it's actually like right there on the paint. So, kind of screwy, but it is what it is. Alright, now we got a problem where the runway's too wide again. Changing the angle is important, though. So now we come back to the middle of the runway. Oh, daughters. Alright, so the center was just marked in the wrong spot, which is not surprising. So getting the width right here is kind of the important part, because that's the pivot point. Everything else is just the, the rotation of the runway. Which actually looks like it's doing pretty well here. So the actual paint it puts like right down on the on the ground level, which is nice, conform with whatever's below it. But there is a rotation issue. Ugh, and this this part is is frustrating. Um, and it's frustrating because I'm not rotating from the center of the runway. I'm rotating from the other end of the runway. So it's hinging on the other on the other end of it. And either this picture is not flat or this paint just ain't flat. <laughs> okay, so that ends up right about in the right spot. That's good. Center line are already off. Okay. So it's set accurately for here. So now if I rotate it around the other side of the runway, I should fix it pretty quickly. I think there's some perspective pro problems with the, the aerial imagery also that kind of make it look like some things are wrong when they're actually not wrong. Yeah, because see from here, the, the runway is this wide, so I think as you get down further, it kind of gets off a little bit. No big whoop. Okay, so click on the runway again and turn off the transparency. All right, so this is my main move here. Now that I've got that in there, I want to go and click Inspector because that'll take all the little edges off so that it just looks like it's pe as it kind of as it would in the sim. Uh, my much lamented lighting issues with how it embeds lights, some of them and not others. We will go in great depth as to how we're going to fix that later. So I can get the same kind of effect by, by that I mean it takes off the little like wireframe kind of borders, which you'll see here, with all the little lines and the, all that kind of stuff that shows that it's selected. You can get rid of all of those in the sim by doing this little middle button. There's got the, you can't see it, it disappears, 
blocking, and then this is the hide the addition lines is what it calls them. Save this, by the way. Hide addition lines, so now it just looks like it's the piece of thing, but you can still mess with the properties while you're doing this. So it's still selected. You just can't see those addition lines. Which means you can turn it on, off and on quite easily. And you can see just how much it looks like the actual thing. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with the materials more. We figured out how to make it transparent. Ground merging is not important. You can see I turned it off. It does almost nothing. It doesn't change anything. So we don't really care about it. Ground merging is fine. Enable colorization. Coloration. That's This is what we want to play with. This is going to be fun. So what I want to do... is we're going to try to match the colors that are outside of the runway. So you can change, this is the cool feature of Microsoft Flight Simulators, you can change the color of materials. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So I can make it red, and you know, you can do all sorts of things. White, so we want to get it kind of close to... Uh, What do we think of that? So this is why I like to do this stuff over here. Turn off the addition lines because now I can I turn it off and on. Pretty easily. So I like to kind of back off a little bit. Now, a little note here for the uninitiated about runway color, like the 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 surface colors here of the photo scenery. So when you're, wh what I'm looking at here is, yes, it's photo imagery, but it doesn't, the photo imagery doesn't look like this on Bing. It doesn't have all these cracks and everything on it. Those are actually added in by, that's a layer that's added above the ground everywhere by Flight Simulator. All Flight Sims do this. X-Plane does it. All versions of Flight Simulator do this. They have this sort of roughed kind of look, and they, you can see it here where it's got like this gravelly stuff kind of on it. And then it puts like some grass and things like that, or it just makes it look rough and like it's the bare ground. Notice it only puts the grass along the painted lines. Interesting, isn't it? Um, so yeah, it's just what it does with these sort of default kind of looking things. It it's it thinks that there should be grass in these spots. That's what it what it says. See, I told you there was a big dip in the middle of this see that there's a definite like bowl to that and they, that's one of the ways you can tell if this is flat or not so anyway it does this automatically to all of this you can go on Bing and look up look at this airport and you will not see all these cracks and this just dirt scumminess so matching the colors to the which is what I'm trying to do is match the colors to the actual photo imagery that we're looking at and not like something from Google because this is what's actually in the game by default so what color am I trying to match? The darker color? No, the darker color is that added crud that makes it kind of look dirty and cracked and, and used. But it's not trying to do that because it thinks it's cement. It's trying to do that because it thinks it's dirt. Because it treats everything that doesn't have an apron on top of it as dirt. It treats it like dirt. It's not cool, you know? So I got to kind of read between the lines and go with the sort of the underlying color there. When I do this. Yeah. 
So if I, for instance, went 115, 118, 147, something like that, it gets, you know, whatever. And I should be able to undo that. There we go. Is there a redo? <laughs> I undid it too many times. Make it not transparent. Okay, so now we get to go back in and do this all over again. So we're going to select the blue, and then I want to get it sort of on, in the blue. that how do we like that so that so the test that I uh, like to use for this is just kind of zooming out a little bit turn it off turn it on that's a little blonder than I think what we need so that's a little too bright that might be better Well, we're going to have to wrap this up here in a bit because I do have an appointment at the top of the hour that I've got to go to for my son. But uh, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, I don't know about that color still. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I feel as if it's thinking about crashing. It may have already. <laughs> I should write these down. 132, 142, 142. <laughs> Come back to it. This is done crashed on me. Yep, so Windows 11, I think, is a total bust. In this respect, which is unfortunate. What are you going to do, you know? So we're just stuck here. Mouse still moves. So, you know, not all is lost. So I'm just going to have to close it. If it will let me. So, the performance wise, it's doing. It's not using any CPU. Memory, barely. GPU, not using at all. It's just very, very strange how this happens. Welcome back. Alright, so it's sort of crashing ish again. Now it's closed. All right, so I'm going to call it there. So I have some things to work on. Uh, my scenery project is actually not where this got saved at all. I'm going to go into documents, KGS or rebuild, move it into there.
copy this folder to my D drive. Add-ons, program files, recordings, installers. All right, scenery files. Custom scenery files. Paste. All right, so I have a, a backup <laughs> for now. So that's good. All of these, let's see, PUBG, Sea of Thieves, Community Shortcuts are all... I need to copy this also, I think. Take add-ons linker with me. Oh, this is annoying. This is really, really annoying. Oh, it just... Okay, so that's all set. All right, well, there will be a reinstallation of Windows, going back to Windows 10, uh, because this stinks, and I don't like it. Which means eventually I'm going to have to do that on the other computer as well. Because, well, I mean, that one's... Ugh, it is what it is. This is just an experiment. It won't take me that long to redo all this. But uh, how annoying. It's just, it's just the name of the game, I guess. It's this Windows game. So Windows 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK DK don't seem to be working all that well together. Let's go into Firefox. Let's see. MSFS SDK Windows 11. Let's see if there's anything in there. Here's a post from YouTube. So I just read news that Windows 11 is released two days later. In two days. This means more FPS decrease for my. <laughs> too sensitive. That needs to be. Uh, Windows 11 Flight Simulator. Just trying to see if there's anybody reporting issues with the SDK. That's the Windows SDK. Windows 11 and crashes. That sounds about right. I keep on experiencing crashes after installing Windows 11. Crashes take place when I click on Fly Now. I made a clean and reinstallation of Microsoft Flight Server 2020, and in the event log this time, it seems there's an SDK issue. No idea how to overcome this. Any help would be appreciated. Can you try uninstalling the SDK, rebooting, and then flying? Thanks for replying. Uh, back again. I don't know. If, uh, thanks for your interest in this topic, strangely enough. Solve my issue in a weird way. First of all, I uninstall the SDK and all the other checkboxes from FSUI PC, which I don't have installed. Reinst reinstalled again by choosing the first checkbox. All remaining options were left out for the installation. Then I tried to upload a different flight plan in the Microsoft Lens. The sim didn't crash when clicking on fly. I don't know if my solution different installation of FSUI PC or a different flight plan. I don't care. The sim is now back to normal. Uh, Turtle Beach. Turtle Beach. That is not... Helpful. SDK. All right. All 
All right. Well, it doesn't seem like there's a good solution to this. But uh, for some reason, for me, at least, Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK is not really playing all that well with Windows 11. So I'll migrate back, migrate back to Windows 10. Won't be that big of a deal. In fact, where is that USB stick? Problem with these things is the kids like to run off with them if I leave them out. Create installation media. <sighs> I'm just upset that Windows 11 stinks so much. When will be the next stream? I could probably do one tomorrow morning. But uh, so I go to work at 3 p.m., which is in two and a half hours. I got a meeting for my son in a half hour. So it'll be a little more than an hour long, probably. So I will be going to work right after that. So I might be able to do one tomorrow morning around the same time. Uh, getting a few things ready. So you get bonus content. This is bonus content, guys, of how, fa how to do a Windows reinstall. You're getting more than you paid for here. <laughs> We're backdating Windows. Great installation media. 1064 bit. Good. USB flash drive. There it is. Now I've never figured out how to get get it so that the capture card can see the like the BIOS part of the, the PC. I think I think a lot of this is it has to download Windows. In fact, let's task manager this baby. Yeah, baby, yeah. Tact manager. Let's see what it's doing. As it does it. Yeah, see what we're doing. About 80 to 114-ish megabits per second, so it's downloading right now. <laughs> downloading Windows 10. Good old fiber connections and the win this this is this is a problem with the Microsoft servers. I have a fiber connection. I should be getting a thousand megabits per second, right? And then I get 80. <laughs> and that's that's what reinstalling Microsoft Flight Sim is like too, incidentally. Which I might have to redo when I reinstall Windows. It took like hours. Eight hours or something like that to to download the whole thing on a fiber connection. If if so, the whole like oh this is the Steam edition, that's a complete misnomer. The installer is a Steam edition installer and installer, but the rest of it is still just going right from inside of the game, uh, from the Microsoft servers. So, if it were really a Steam edition like Xplane is, when you can when you buy it from Steam. Then you'd be downloading from the Steam servers, and Steam servers are super fast. I get 110 megabytes per second on a Steam server when I'm downloading stuff. Microsoft, I get junk. I get 10 megabytes per second. So that's like, what, 9% of my download speed? Not acceptable. Windows 11, you're dead to me. You died on me several times, or you, you screwed up my flight sim at least. The actual OS is not, it's not crashed, but. A good healthy Windows reinstall is, is a good thing, periodically. It really, really makes your computer run nice. 100 megabits maximum, at least in the area where I live, in Germany. Somebody has, yeah, they, somebody has to have fiber available. In Germany, I would imagine. Germany is a lot of tech, tech and stuff like that that I would think that there would be fiber available in some places. Do 
tell you guys are all riveted by this content because our viewers have gone. <sighs> they really don't make this easy, I know, guys. I'm sorry. That downloads. I'm trying to see how, how I can. Mess with my stream beats, my stream labs, uh, stuff here to get my activity feed working because it hasn't added a, a subscriber since June 4th. I just had five today, so. Anyway, my, uh, yeah, you lose, you get nothing. Said in uh, Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka voice, I'm sure. Which my, my Twitch, Twitch account is, uh, I've kind of abandoned it in, in favor of YouTube just because I like YouTube better. But, uh, <clears throat> it's hard getting the, Starting back from zero on viewers and subscribers and whatnot, trying to build it up. So 47 is where we're at. The bonus content, we're two-thirds done with this download. I don't know why it's not going faster. But. Uh, repping the In-N-Out Burger t-shirt today. In-N-Out from California. Where I'm from, In-N-Out. If you've never been, you're missing out. Really missing out on good burgers. This is just the ultimate, ultimate and bonus content, guys. I know. Wow, it shows that I'm streaming on YouTube. That's pretty cool. On Discord. 83%. We're getting close. Yeah. In the land of California land. I really do need to start setting up... Uh, my stream, my stream elements bot. Chicken biscuit available on the Chick Fil A app. Real Chick Fil A guests paid for their testimonial. There we go. Ninety-five percent. Ninety-six. I don't know why this is taking so long. There must be busy servers today or something. It usually doesn't take this long to download Windows. All right, verifying your download. I'm sure that'll take forever. Oh, it shows my IP address. That's awesome. I like Chick-fil-A. All right, so it's loading things onto the memory disk right now, 100% usage. Transfer rate, uh, write speed of about 
30 megabytes per second, so that's already three times faster than the download speed. But yeah, this is going real fast. is watching snare nuke his windows install so windows 11 deep loader is what i did before right this is the guy that i watched no not this not this guy i don't know who this guy is so last year i paid nothing for electricity and I actually made money by using a special program that paid me. How's it going, everyone? It is Tanjino here. All right. Does this guy have How's a Windows it 10? And in tool? How to deploy Windows 10 for best performance speed. Speed up Windows six months ago. Okay. That's what we want to look at. How's it going, everyone? It is Panjano here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to successfully debloat Windows 10 to free up some excess storage space, help the PC boot faster and applications load faster, and most importantly, reduce some of the load on the CPU to reduce your CPU usage. All in turn, all of the optimizations shown in this video are going to overall improve the performance of your PC, regardless of what tasks you're doing, whether it be web browsing, documents, video editing, or even gaming. Debloating Windows 10 is a fantastic way to achieve better performance and get the most out of your PC without having to spend a penny if you guys do enjoy this video please do remember to leave a like and a comment to help me out with the youtube algorithm as it does help out tremendously with all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor tired of seeing the activate windows watermark built a new pc or just want to own windows at a major discount head over to WhoKeys to purchase a windows 10 11 home or pro oem key at a major discount make sure to use code pan 20 for a further 20 percent off this is the stuff right here a safe and secure payment method such as paypal once your key is delivered simply input the key inside of windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Before we start off with any of the optimizations in this video, we're first of all going to be quickly setting up a system restore point. This is a quick and simple way to just make sure that every single optimization we're going to set with inside of this video can be reverted for any reason if you wish to do so. Which all right, I'm just going to load this video up on my stream PC not play it all right close all this down we don't need any of this we're gonna do a reboot all right let's think about this let's think about this so i got all the add-ons linker i need to put in there Yeah, it's not bad, right? Okay. Most of this stuff saved on D drive. So my KVM is not going to work for this. Turn on the extra USB mouse that I have. Oh, I think 
I screwed it up already. Yeah, went right into Windows. Okay. I didn't catch it before it did. This is the portion of the stream where we talk about how to format your hard drive and put Windows 10 instead of Windows 11 on it. The bonus content, part B. The prep is done. I missed it again. <laughs> Not paying attention. We're getting really good at get, getting to this screen, aren't we? <sighs> Vibin' while installed. Yeah. Vibin' while real installing. Reinstalling. Reinstalling. Or restarting. Oh, this is the third time now restarting. Yeah, so we got to catch it on this screen. Come on, there we go. Get me to the BIOS. I'm kind of bummed that it doesn't show this on my Elgato thing. It doesn't work for some reason. All right, boot. We're booting off a sand disk. All right, you should have an image here in a second. There we go. So I don't want to show this either. So how does it... I've seen other streamers show this before. Why isn't it doing it? I'm about to use, like, HDMI... I am using HDMI, I thought. Don't have a product key, sorry. Windows 10, home, 64-bit. Accept, custom install. All right, so take all the partitions on drive zero and saying bye-bye. Yes, that is the right one, okay. Bye-bye. Oh boy. And oh boy. Okay, so in the unallocated space, create a new install of Windows, copying files. This is going to go insanely fast. Yeah. Smash buttons until it works. So, I guess the install, because it's still BIOS based, I guess, DOS based, I should say, or whatever, it's it's not gonna, it's not showing on the capture card. I don't know exactly know why. So now the stream, the stream's getting even worse. <laughs> now it's just me and some music playing, and. You're just guessing that a Windows install is going on in the background. Oh, we don't need to play this again. Why does it go back? Why did it go back to this? I mean, I like the song and all, but... Uh, calling California. Oh, restart coming. Here we go. Webcam on the desk. I could do that, I guess. But there's a way to do this where you should be able to... S the capture card should pick it up, but uh, it's just not right now. I don't know why. We're almost in Windows here anyway. It's probably display driver re related. Maybe if it was... If I had a integrated seat like GPU, it pr would probably work. Ready to go? Uh, Oh, it's time to go. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna end the stream there because I gotta get going. Hey. 
Let's see, what else could I put on the screen? Well, anyway, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, didn't go the way we wanted it to. We got a lot of stuff done, but now like the whole like last hour of this is going to be absolute garbage that nobody's going to be able to use for anything. And uh, so the tutorial hath endeth, and uh, it, it only got so far. But we got some of the important stuff done. We got some good content in there. I think there's some useful bits in here. That's basically how to get started with one of these projects. And, Hi there. Uh, I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Hi, Cortana. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the window. And you're, you're muted. Okay. Congratulations, you are muted. Let's, yeah, let's dig in. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back again tomorrow, and hopefully we'll have a working install of, re of uh, <coughs> Windows that will do all the things we need them to do. And uh, Microsoft at Flight Simulator SDK will, will be... <laughs> will be a little bit better. It's kind of a tutorial. I mean, I was showing everybody how to get these projects started in the, the Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK, but uh, it went downhill real quick when everything when it kept crashing. So now it's a how to jettison, how to troubleshoot these problems by going back to Windows 10 as a <laughs> tutorial that I can't show you the screen on. So there's that. So anyway, I'm going to sign off. i got to get going to my meeting, so I will see you guys later. Join us again tomorrow. Thank you for the likes and subscribes. I really do appreciate it. Have a good one.